It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today's video, I'm going to be having a look at a bunch of items that have actually come in from Qlavia. So Qlavia has kind of entered the scene mid sort of 2018 this year and came out quite explosively with the concept of what was a bit of a joke but turned into reality, which was the Keyblade. So if you haven't seen or heard about the key, the Keyblade, I would highly recommend you check it out because it's actually quite fun. It's a lot of fun, it's a little bit wacky, and you might not necessarily be able to get through airports without security guards checking out your luggage. Now, I don't actually have a Keyblade. Uh, it was probably not something that I would be likely to be using, and so, you know, it, I didn't get involved in that. But talking with Kulavia, they have actually sent me a package of stuff for the Sydney meetup as sponsored prizes as well as there's some content in the box for me to check out before they actually go to another owner so you know it's going to be essentially I'm drop shipping kind of stuff for them but it gave me a chance to actually check out what they've been doing and the kind of products the quality and things like that so let us rock on and have a look at the contents of this box. Now, I want my desktop and the logo, and here we go. So I've got a box of stuff here, and I'm gonna start pulling some things out, and we can we can have a look at what's going on here. So, I've got some, some cases, we've got some stickers, we've got some switch testers, we've got a bunch of keychain bits, there's some keycaps and a very big switch mod plate. So as you can see, pretty much anything that is related to acrylic laser cut stuff is what is within what Qlavia does. Now to just briefly explain about the Keyblade is it's basically a keyboard in an acrylic housing like a blade, like a machete. Now from um, zip ties came the Zealant, which is a staggered board that is like in a, a slant formation, like a, a rhomboid, rhomboid, trapezium, one of those two shapes. I can't remember exactly which one it is. And they actually made, Culavia designed a layered acrylic case that fits that. So at the moment, even right now, they're working on a sliding case where the actual handle part slides in and out of the acrylic layers, which is actually really cool. So let's just have a quick look at some of the stuff here. Uh, maybe let's start with the stickers. So now, Kulavia also branched out into getting some uh, custom art done with some concepts in mind. And this was kind of happening around the switch cracking issues, the, the cap busters, the kale keycaps that had those problems. And so there was a bit of a playfulness here. There's a bit of sort of hentai suggestive slightly not safe for work kind of things going on with these stickers. So, let's have a look. Ooh, okay, so we've got some small ones and some big ones. We've got the standard cherry sort of patent print, which is pretty cool. That's always nice. Ah, yes, I forgot. So Kulavia has also commissioned using the images that were done for them to do patches. So here's an embroidered patch, which is actually really nice. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a, a peel and stick scenario or if this is an iron on patch. Uh, I'm not going to try and play with the backing there simply because I don't want to mess it up for obviously anybody else. I will have to probably ask about that. So there's there's the actual original sticker for that and the matching patch which of course is significantly larger than, uh, than this little mini sticker. But you know what? The artwork is really nice and clean. I'm not sure if they used an actual picture and sort of traced it because the proportions in it are excellent or if they just did an outline and photoshopped it and whatnot. Now I realize that's kind of looking pretty lewd there but uh, let me just quickly sort through some of these. So we got some rubber domes, we've got some little cuties powered by QMK, <laughs> ISO Master Race. Oh that'll, that'll go down well for people who enjoy ISO. Some more varieties of this in different color tones. Q 
Okay, Ansi for life against the ISO Master race. So you can see there's a good range of color options and choices here from these stickers. Ah, okay, and so here is an example of what the actual Keyblade looks like with a Zealand um, PCB in it. And then we get into the bigger version of the stickers. We have some, some Alps stickers, which are really cool. They kind of have that sort of street artish look about it, and that one's got a floral background. Another Keyblade, and oh, look at that beast of a sticker. Now, I don't know what you would put that on exactly, but that's saying mechanical switches loud and proud. So I'm starting to run out of space here. We've got some box switches going on. Some smaller versions. A couple of different switches. We've got low profile, kale low profile. DSA keycaps, switch tester. What else is happening here? What's that? That's a deconstruction of some kind of top ray. It's like got the top ray dome, but it's like a, a re legendable. Not quite sure what's happening on that one. If anyone knows what's going on on that one. And then we get to the big version of um, some very perhaps office inappropriate type of stickers. I probably will have to label this video as a potential not safe for work video. Not that this is actually technically that, but it's just lewd. So that is representative of uh, stems being cracked and the the actual switch stem being too big, thanks to the, the kale issues. And then of course, lubing stems as part of what we often do in our, in our mods and community. So there's a couple more of those although they all have the same tone on the larger ones. So, you know, they're glossy stickers. They're definitely not sort of matte because the, the light is shining off them somewhat. You can kind of see the surface texture there, though they've probably suffered a little bit from rubbing against the other stickers in transit. I don't know if that's a, a good quality sticker company or material, JAC, whatever it is, but I'm sure they will work just fine. So that's pretty cool. Um, what I'll do with these is I will actually break these up into a couple of packs and then they can go towards the actual meetup giveaways, uh, all courtesy to Kulavia. So let's quickly and gently put these all back together uh, and get them into a bag. Back into the bag they go. Hopefully I'll be able to get them in without damaging them too badly. Oh, well that one's... what's that one? That's a buckling spring sticker. There you go. That's pretty cool. So if you're into stickers, and if you want to sticker bomb something, um, then there is definitely a good range of stickers available through Kulavia. And yeah, as long as you're okay with people perhaps looking at your stuff going, what the heck is going on here? Or if you're going to have a, a conversation with a manager, or a boss, a teacher, or, or somebody saying, please explain this image on your keyboard <laughs> which hopefully nobody will actually get in trouble for it all right so that's that's done okay so let's check out the next item so we've got three switch tester plates here they look pretty good pretty standard um let me get some calipers Or some plastic calipers from my, my wife's sewing collection because I don't want to use metal calipers on these and, and mark them up. But uh, so we normally expect about 14 mil or thereabouts. And look at that, it's just under 14 mil. So I've heard that 1385 is actually really good for mod plates because it gives you a good amount of grip without it being too tight that switches won't fit into it. So it's just under 14, so I'd say that's probably pretty close. 
Obviously, there's going to be uh, issues on on kerning as well, but I feel that will probably be perfectly fine. So this is, yeah, it's got massive feet. Look at the size of those feet. So we're looking, what's that? We're talking 11 mil from top of plate to bottom of the feet, and this is 3 mil acrylic. So that is a 8 mil foot, to, uh, just just under 8 mil. About 7 point something, 775 maybe. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm not actually going to put switches in them because obviously I don't want to sort of mark them up. But there's some three colors there. Obviously a fluoro yellow, a nice rich red, and then there's this kind of smoky one. It doesn't have any layers on it by the looks of it. It's actually being peeled off. Uh, but I do really like that smoke. It's a matte, it's got a good texture on it, and it doesn't take away from whatever it is that you're going to be putting in there. So it'd be perfect for putting switches for a switch testing plate, as well as if you just put some switches in for artisan display as well. So you can mount artisans against that. So that's really cool. It's nice and rounded, though I think the feet, to be honest, are a little bit big because if you have a look, the actual feet stick out because when they put them on, they didn't want them sticking into the inside of the actual cutout, which is understandable because it's going to get in the way of your switch. But then it actually causes it to stick out past the outside. So I would suggest possibly increasing the width of these so that you can get these feet put on and you won't run into the risk of getting it on the inside of the actual switch uh, cutout, but you're also not going to get this amount of sticking out because you know what, that's actually still tacky and as that picks up dirt and dust and grime that's going to look really not nice. So that's just a bit of feedback for you, uh, but of course, you know, it's still well appreciated. So let's move that along. We'll save this big boy till last I think. Uh, let's get into some of these smaller bits and pieces before they fall off my desk. So we've got some, some what look to be die sub keycaps. So we've just got the Kulavia logo there and a Keyblade. Now there's not much point in me taking them out, they're just standard blank DSAs by the look out of it. The lines are pretty crisp, it's very recognizable, so cool bananas for that. So these are going to be for the meetup, and we have a range of Keyblades and other laser cut. Now so what I was talking before about that matte switch tester is that it, those had their films taken off and you can see the actual film because this material is blue is actually still on this so it's been cut out of the acrylic but they've but Qlavia have actually left the film on it and I guess after peeling the first one they've kind of gone and said well they can't be bothered trying to peel the film off all of these switches <laughs> or it's deliberately left there so there's that contrast but it's up to you know the individual if they want to meticulously take it all off so we've got some 60%, yep, there's some 60% there. And that's an example of a Zealant by Zip Ties. So it's just a, a staggered formation, ortho stagger, I think is really probably the best way of, of describing it because it, it doesn't have standard mods and longer keys. Uh, and then there is another standard Keyblade. So that's pretty cool. So some of that's going to go out towards the meat. I'm not quite sure how these will be distributed. Maybe they might be random in goodie bags. They might be, you know, sort of door prizes. We'll, we'll have to work that one out. Okay. Now we start getting into the more interesting stuff. So I've actually got two Gherkin cases here. Now the Gherkin, if you're not familiar with it, is a very affordable, low-cost, 30% ortholinear keyboard and the the standard for that is homemade cases uh, it does have an option that you can get the plate version and a base uh, if you want to and it becomes a complete PCB build which is like what I've got except I don't have the plate version so just me quickly throwing things around here if I dig mine out so obviously I'm not going to rebuild mine to, to try and put it into one of these, but uh, this is an example of a Gherkin. It's one of the first builds I ever did for this channel. And 
as you can see it's you know it's pretty cool um, but this is a replacement case for the gherkin now feedback because feedback is always what people are after and looking for to improve I like the design it has it has dimensionality to it so it actually bulges out it's not just a straight boring flat kind of cut to it it's got a very wide opening here so that you don't have to be too worried about your port positioning okay because then you don't have to worry about is it going to be exact and is it going to prevent your USB cables from actually getting into it um, but that said these layers are moving quite a bit but I don't know if it's because the layers haven't been fully tightened down so as you can see I can kind of separate them they are shifting a bit but I don't know if it's just because it's not tight but that said I can't seem to tighten any of these by by finger now so it might actually be already tight if that's the case then I think the hardware might actually be the wrong length for it if the hardware is the wrong length then that's what's going to be causing that sort of bit of slackness to it and I know that that would definitely annoy some people because you're going to get some some movement and wobble in that so maybe introduce another layer of thickness or look at what alternative hardware that you have that can help prevent that and and as I'm just noticing there's a gap here between that plate and the bottom and I think once again that's a, a hole size and hardware type of issue because as I wiggle that that's where your layers are starting to to move around so that's the white one let's see if the problem is persistent and is in the black one as well okay this is a very okay so it's that smoke gray it just looks black once it was inside the plastic and it's got the same kind of wobble to it it's got the same flex flexibility in that like I can easily move that without any effort whatsoever and it is shifting around now let's just check between the layers and yeah so we can see well I can see there's there's that gap again so it looks like there's a, a knurled sort of uh, standoff in that position and then these brass screws on top. So that, that knurled bit in the middle potentially could be shorter to allow the screws to actually pull down a little bit tighter. And I would say also, now looking at it, because it's only mounted by four points here, you might want to introduce two more just to give it a bit more tightness across the middle because that's where the most flex is going to happen. And you know, as I as I just squeeze this, look at that bouncing in and out, right? So if you put another two in, I know of course it's going to increase the cost, but I think people would be willing to pay for the additional cost and it's going to look even no different to, you know, the number of standoffs and screws used on a standard kind of gherkin build anyway but uh, I do really like this smoke acrylic it looks really gorgeous so so that's some gherkin cases there I don't know how much they go for but uh, it's nice it's it's got good clean cuts there's no sort of melty or burny look upon them it smells like plastic <laughs> I mean, there's no burning smell left on this um, not that I was expecting it to and uh, yeah the edges you know are crisp but they're not so sharp that I'm cutting myself or anything like that nature so there you have it some gherkin cases All right let's put my gherkin away Sock fiasco there. Okay, and last but not least, so I'm gonna have to perhaps use some other tape to rewrap this later. I'm just gonna strategically.
cut through this tape. And is that going to let me get that out? No. Okay. As you can see, it's been well packaged. Not quite sure what's going on with the the order of folding, but that's okay. I've got heaps of bubble wrap, so I can restore this later. So you know this is wow. That's very red. It's very very red. It's very very shiny. So that's the underside, and you can see there's a whole bunch of those eight mil feet that have been applied. Uh, first thing I'm going to say is that. Uh, the feet have not been applied on evenly. Now, if you have OCD um, and you receive this, you might get a little bit upset because the actual <laughs> the actual spacing is is not the same. That one's like heaps below, and then if I do that, that one's heaps above. Um, whereas if I go across the bottom, you'll see. These two are kind of in line and these two are not in line. Um, I don't know if they had a process in actually putting them where they need to go, but if they don't have a process in doing that, they probably want to think about how they want to do that so it does have evenness. Even that's slightly off. Uh, but look, they could just provide the pack of, what's that, 16 uh, bump-ons as part of this and then it would be up to the actual purchaser to stick them on themselves. So it's nice that they went and spent the time and effort putting them on, but they could have left that bottom film on because you can see they've left the, the top film on, and then they would have had the pleasure of peeling it back and, and bunging these on. So this is a Switch mod plate. It's actually quite large. Um, I think it's per row because the Switch goes in and then like the housing and the stem goes into it. That's what I believe because the cutout footprint for this is not a switch footprint. Um, I believe. Well, I've got a, a switch here and yeah, so so like that sits in that perfectly but it's actually really loose. Like, look at that. It's not even, it, it just falls straight out. Whether it's meant to be tight or not, I actually don't know, but it's it's definitely not a snap. Um, whereas, is that for Alps? That could be a uh, an Alps footprint. Let me dig out an Alps. So there's an Alps switch. Um, Oops, there we go. See that, that doesn't really seem to make sense either. Just rotating that around in case there's... Nope, and of course, why would you put it in this way? But, um, yeah. So I feel like it must be for the, the actual housing of a switch. Now, can I pop one of these open? wildly and quickly and the answer is yes I can so there's a the housing and yeah so it looks like it's designed to sit the housing on there and then your switch is going to go in there and then your stem um, Oh, okay, right, so the stem is meant to sit in there upside down so you can actually lube it. Right, 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 right. But because I'm using a box switch in this circumstance, uh, it's not going to fit. So if you plan on getting one of these to do box switches, it's not quite there yet. Of course, if there's another revision or they can somehow be clever in, in creating it somehow, uh, I don't quite know how you're going to do that for box switches, but yeah so it's not quite there for box switches but for standard mx for you know cherries for gatorons 
those kind of switches, it would do just fine. Once again, you know, it's got really clean cuts. They haven't spent a lot of excessive power on it because I'm not seeing any burn marks. Whereas on some of those keychain ones, I'll, I'll pull one out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so if we have a look on the back here, you'll see that burn mark is from the actual cutting process because the plastic is burning and smoke is coming off and it's actually smoking the film. Um, and you can see that as well. There's like red smoky bits coming off that. So it's nice that this was actually cut very, very cleanly and you're not getting a lot of that sort of smoky artifactness on this. So it looks like they really got their laser cutter tuned up sharp and we're using good settings to make this happen. So there you go. So there's a, a collection of stuff that is available from Qlavia. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure if they have a website as such, but they do have, yes, so, so it's Fragile with Care and it's uh, Qlavia.com and I believe they've also got an Instagram. So make sure you head over to that. I'll put, of course, links in the description below and I want to say thank you to Kulavia for providing a bunch of stuff for the meetup, as you saw, as well as letting me check out some of this stuff before it goes to their final homes. So uh, there you have it. And of course, this is going to be, I think, the last video for review stuff, kind of regular release for November. Still going on here. November is still happening. Please, if you want to get involved, you can enter the competition. There's no cost or donation required, but it's just a way to get people to check out Movember, to see what the Movember Foundation is all about, what it supports, and if you feel like it and you've got the finances to assist in making a donation, then please do, because it is probably one of the world's largest organized events for raising awareness on men's health. So there you go. There you have it. Thanks again for checking out the video. If you are not a subscriber, I would love it if you would hit like, share and subscribe. And don't forget, we also have a podcast series talking about mechanical keyboards and mechanical keyboard related content uh, generally released weekly. Links below. So until next time, happy clacking.